Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and this video is all about the top 10 reasons why you can't pick that lock. So we've all been there, we can't pick that lock, we just get really frustrated with it, and this video is meant to be a reference guide to the top reasons, as far as I'm concerned, as to why you might not be picking that lock. Right, no particular order, let's crack on. You're using too much or too little tension. So let's go with too much tension. This is very common for new pickers um, because increasing the tension means that you are more likely to feel a pin binding because it binds more strongly. You're pushing more force onto the pin laterally so it's sticking against the, um, the, the core and the Bible a lot harder. What that can mean though, if I put, if instead of just holding normal tension, I push that tension bar really far down, is that the pins do give you better feedback in terms of them binding, but it also means that uh, when you do press on them, you risk damaging your tool by having to push so hard on it, your pick tool, but also when you do finally um, get that pin to be pushed up, you can push it way too far because you're putting a lot of force on the pin, meaning that it actually picks all the way up um, into the Bible and takes the key pin with it, which will actually overset that key pin and stop that core from turning anyway. Using too little tension, conversely, you can see how much tension I was putting on there. Look how uh, my fingers are indented. Too little tension means that you may not actually be binding any of the pins at all, and therefore you don't get any feedback in terms of a binding pin, so you can't really pick any of them every time that you um, touch one of the pins it just falls back into position. A type of lock which can exacerbate these issues are locks with a strong core spring. What that tends to mean, and it's more difficult for newer pickers, is that when you are tensioning a lock like this you either don't tension it enough against that core spring so you're not turning the um, core around enough with your tension tool to bind the pins or you are over tensioning it to try and combat that core spring it's that subtle balance something which only really practice and experience can combat you're binding the core when you're tensioning the lock think of the core of the lock being a tube which is cut nearly all the way through vertically and all the way along to the back if you put too much tension on the lock, especially bottom of the keyway, you can end up splaying the two sides of the core, especially in cheaper locks, uh, under force, and that can mean that even if you pick the lock, the core won't turn, it's jammed against the body of the lock. Another way in which this happens, and this is the one which catches me out, is sometimes you use the wrong tension tool, and what can happen is that you can dig into the body of the lock instead of the core itself. So what we're doing is we're not turning the core here, we're tensioning against the core and the body of the lock. It's essentially just jammed in there and this means that um, if you've got the wrong tension tool in, you're not tensioning the core, you're tensioning really the body of the lock. You made the wrong choice of picking tool for the lock you have, right? So this is one of those things which is really part and parcel to lock picking. It's finding the right combination of tension tool, of course, and lock pick for your lock. And there are probably too many examples to go through um, here, but I'll choose, again, some of the more common examples where the right pick make all the difference between being able to pick your lock and not being able to pick your lock. So take, for example, a high security lock like this with a very paracentric, ugly looking keyway. If you were to try to use a big, thick, short hook um, like this in 25 thousandths, you're going to struggle to get anywhere near up through that warding to hit the pins. It's just too thick and it's too shallow. So what can you do? Well, you could try a deeper hook, but again, this is in 25 thousandths, that might get you so far but again, you're going to be deflected off this warding. So there are other options. You can buy picks now in 15 thousandths of an inch and even 12 thousandths of an inch and beyond. And these will allow you to wiggle past 
some of the warding there you go and access those pins in ways which thicker picks just wouldn't then we have lots of very small keyways now it could be that you're used to using um, quite deep hooks when you're picking something like this and you might come across this lock and just use the same hook but of course you know this is a very small keyway this hook is very deep and already you can see the problem in that I can't really pick up those pins at the right angle to pick them all the way to the top because the pick is too big to get around that warding I can't work this pick around the warding to pick any of these pins it's just too big so what you'd need is a shallow hook something like this and then I might even be able to pick off the warding here just insert and wriggle it round like that that gives you uh, much better access to the pins and I could, of course can pick all the way up to the top of the lock by just choosing the right short hook for a small keyway sometimes though you might have a relatively small keyway and try to use your short hook but still not be successful in picking this lock why well have a look at this key for example and you see that it's got very extreme bitting pins one two and three are in this v configuration which means if i use a short hook and i try to pick pin three there i would be oversetting pin two that is pushing the key pin up into the bible of the lock and stopping the lock from opening well how would i get around that well i might have to revert to a a deeper hook and as long as the keyway is wide enough i might be able to actually work this round the warding like that to pick up on the pins so again it's just another pick choice where a shallow hook just wouldn't have worked a deep hook might save the day then of course we've got raking techniques so I have a lock here where I'm going to try and rake it using this double peak pick I'm just going to go in and we're going to just try and rake um, this lock open and there we go it opens very easily now if I tried that with something like the city rake which might may work on numerous other locks I find that I could be there for minutes, days, hours, weeks even trying to open this and getting very frustrated with myself. But why is it that one of those rakes works, one of them doesn't? Again, it's down to that bitting. If you look here, a double peak rake like this will be able to just get in behind this deep cut here, that low set pin and rake those pins open without disturbing this pin and oversetting it. While if I use this city rake, you can already see that if I'm trying to access these pins at the back, I'm going to be pushing this key pin up into the Bible, oversetting it, and I won't get that open. So again, it's all about that importance of pick choice, spending the time to decide what is the best pick for that lock. It can be a lot more difficult if you don't have the key to read from. Um, in that case, then it's just feel, practice and experience which will determine how to pick the lock. Misidentification of the locking mechanism. This happens in two broadly different ways. The first of which is more common amongst newer pickers who pick up locks without keys and are making assumptions based on the keyway alone. For example, it's very common to see a lock like this and assume because it has a vertical keyway, broadly similar to standard pin tumblers, that it is indeed a pin tumbler. When actually, especially if you have the key, you can see that this is a warded lock and therefore doesn't have any pins in it at all. New pickers finding locks like this for the first time may assume that this is also a standard pin tumbler especially if holding it with the keyway vertically but of course if you just inspect you can see there we have a horizontal pin in fact it's better to view this lock horizontally it's a dimple lock and again if you didn't have the key it's perfectly normal to assume for a new picker that it is a standard pin tumbler
locks like this, which are a little bit rarer to find. To a new picker, you might assume this is a standard wafer lock or maybe a pin tumbler if you didn't have the key. With the key though, you can see that this is something a little bit different and it is a wafer lock, but it is a, a slider wafer lock, a slightly different mechanism. And again, to a new picker, trying to pick these locks in the same way they would pick a standard pin tumbler will lead to failure. The best way you can combat that is just by researching the lock um, on the internet and of course experience. The second reason why misidentification of a locking mechanism can lead to locks not being pickable is largely based around assumptions and lack of uh, research of the lock you are actually picking which is compounded sometimes by not having the key to that lock. This is something which can trip up even the most experienced of pickers including myself from time to time. Here are four quite common examples of where an assumption could lead to never picking a lock or at least struggling. First up is a rather innocuous looking handbag lock. Just looks like a standard four pin padlock and in some ways it is. However, away from the pins at the top, you might be able to see a small check pin down at the bottom which also needs to pick, be picked before the lock will open. If you didn't know that, you could be picking this lock for days and never realize. A lock like this, you can see the standard pins at the top. You might see that there are, is something going um, on here with a double row of pins, but again, if you weren't experienced, you didn't know what was going on, you may be under the assumption that this is just a standard six pin cylinder. If you have the key, however, you will see there is a double row of pins. And again, if you didn't know that, you may never find that out on your own and you'd be stuck. Maybe, something which is more of an annoyance than something which will truly stop you picking the lock, but worth mentioning anyway, are locks with really nice beveled pins. These trip up even the most experienced of pickers if you don't know they're in the lock, because a lock will feel picked, but be hung up on a beveled pin and be very tricky to open. If you don't know they're there, you may not know how to combat them. And last but no means least is a lock which by the name many experienced pickers will know has a special mechanism inside which requires you to not only lift the pins to shear but also rotate them at the same time and you can see that the cuts on the key are angled. Again if you didn't know that you may get an open eventually but it'll be random rather than calculated. This would be um, even more common if you had been picking other locks which look very similar and made the assumption that this one would be the same. It's broken. So this actually happens again more commonly than you might expect if you are buying and trying to pick used locks. There's no guarantee, especially if you don't have a key, that the lock is actually working on the inside and you can be spending a lot of time trying to pick locks which will never be opened. So here is one example. There is, I have a lock which um, operates perfectly well, but the other side is completely broken. In fact, I can't even put the key in. If I had bought this lock secondhand and I didn't have the key, and I started picking the broken side, I could be there for hours and hours thinking that I didn't have the skill to open a lock when the lock could never be opened. Quite common with locks which have been outside and are rusted, they can be so rusted that the internals can be completely seized up um, to a point where they can never be recovered. Again, you may be trying to pick one of these locks and not quite realize. With older locks, you may have uh, completely broken springs, you may have jammed pins, you may even find that somebody has uh, snapped off um, a key at the back of a lock or uh, try to stick a tool or a screwdriver or something inside a lock. Sometimes they are even bought with glue inside um, when you buy them secondhand. How do you combat this? Well, sometimes you'd have to take a chance on what looks like a bargain and 
sometimes you have to accept that you will buy a lock which is broken. But for a new picker who may not be able to discern when a uh, lock is broken or their skills aren't actually up to picking it yet, well, I always say try, try, try to make sure that you always buy locks with a key and check that they are actually working first because if it doesn't work, it's likely you won't be able to pick it. It's too dirty. Yep, this one's really common and can really frustrate experienced pickers as well as new pickers. If you're picking old or vintage or just well-used locks, it's likely they have worn internals, they're full of dirt, old grease, uh, metal filings and shavings from the internals of the lock and the key from years of use, all combined together inside. What does that do? Well, it robs the picker from feedback. It can make it very hard to discern when a pin is binding, when it's um, when it's setting, when it has been set or whether it's overset. All of those states can be very hard to discern when a lock is caked full of grease and dust and age and wear. Now, that doesn't matter so much because you can still pick these locks, but the feedback is very subtle. Sometimes increasing the tension can help. What can you do? Well, you can clean the locks up with a degreaser, ultrasonic baths, um, and, and all sorts of oil baths. There's lots of different ways you can uh, clean up certain locks, but go careful with them, especially if they're old. One common thing you find in old locks is people mislubricating them. So out of the factory, this would have been lubricated with a graphite powder. And over the years, this one has been oiled or greased. And if you look at the key, you'll see exactly what problem that has. And that creates this kind of black gungy paste with the graphite powder and the oil. You can still pick these locks, as I say, but it does help to give them a clean first and at least be aware that one of the reasons you might not be able to pick one of these locks is they're just not giving very strong feedback. And again, that is something which with a little bit of practice and experience, you get slightly better at reading these older locks. You made the wrong tension tool choice. Now, there are so many different types of locks and so many different ways to, to tension them that going through every example would be well, impossible. So I'll choose two really common examples of where the wrong tension tool choice can mean that you won't pick your lock. First one is small keyways. Now, if like me, you like to pick locks using bottom of the keyway tension like this, you may look at a small keyway and find a slim down tension tool and think that that'll be adequate. But when you actually look how much room you have to insert your pick, even a short hook like this, you'll see that you've got very little space here. And what you're more likely to do is overset these pins when inserting the pick. A better choice would be to use something like this cut down wiper blade tension tool to use the top of the keyway, which gives you access to this whole half of the keyway to insert your pick and rotate round to pick those pins. A second example are where you have locks which just require a really, really high amount of tension to bind the pins and get the right amount of feedback. Using something like a twisted tension tool will not allow you to get that amount of tension because these are designed to flex really heavily. Great in some locks, but not locks like this. So you may want to swap over to a tension tool which is a lot sturdier and doesn't have that degree of flex. The choice of tension tool is absolutely critical when picking any lock, and it's definitely worth spending good time trying to find the right tension tool for that lock so you don't end up wasting uh, minutes and hours picking a lock unsuccessfully when, if only you'd chosen the right tension tool, you may have picked it straight away. You're second guessing the lock. Now this is related to the misidentification of the locking mechanism, but in a slightly different and very subtle way in which you yourself are not relying on your skills and feedback to pick a lock. You are just trying to pick the lock based on your assumptions that you've made about it. So here are some great examples of where a lock 
may completely throw you because you're just trying to pick it in a way which this lock um, can't be picked or is very hard to pick in that way. So here we have, for example, a master lock. You're thinking master lock, laminated, standard pins, easy. Actually, this master lock 19, I believe, has serrated pins. There are six of them and extremely strong springs, and it's a very tough pick. So if you go in with the mindset, it's just an easy master lock with standard pins, you're not going to rely on the feedback which it's telling you, uh, which will allow you to get that open. So it's a mindset issue more than a misidentification of the mechanism issue. Same with something like this, little 40 mil brass padlock, really easy. Actually, no, not so much. These are really tricky locks to pick and I believe have beveled pins inside, which I mentioned um, earlier, which can really throw you. Again, if you're not listening to the lock and you've made an assumption that's gonna be real easy based on the fact that it's a little 40 mil brass padlock, it will throw you and you're going to struggle to pick it. Same with this, which has serrated pins. And then sometimes, and this is actually quite common, especially if you don't have the keys, you just find a, a no brand Euro that you've made an assumption, just has a, a few spools in. Um, and again, you could be picking for ages. And what you're doing, it's not just a misidentification of the mechanism, um, which, which is fine, we all do that. But like I said, it's about that mindset. You've already made up your mind what's inside the lock. So you're not allowing yourself to get any feedback. You're not allowing yourself to read the feedback. It's telling you through the pick, through the tension tool to discern what it is. And this actually is a um, a, a, a GG Europa with some uh, really um, cool pins inside. Not something which um, a lock picker couldn't pick relatively easily. Um, it's just that if you're in that mindset that it is a standard Euro cylinder lock, you will probably not allow your mind to um, just dial in to that feedback it's giving you. So it's not like a, a, a direct misidentification of the locking mechanism. It's not allowing yourself to identify it through feel. The lock is just beyond your current skill level and that is nothing, I mean nothing, to be ashamed of or worried about. We all have a lock which will just defeat our current skills. And that's why lock picking is so much fun, because there is always that lock we can't pick. So it's quite common for new pickers to have practice on, say, plastic padlocks, move through some uh, must locks with standard pins, and then sometimes just stumble upon um, a lock that was lent to them that they bought on eBay, um, like a medical biaxial or something like that, and then struggle to pick it. And that's because these locks are a world apart from these locks. And it will just take experience and practice to be able to pick some of these harder locks. Um, for example, I've not managed to yet pick an Asa Twin, but I don't feel any shame because of that. It just means that I have another challenge to look forward to. And that's what we need to do. We need to look forward to the challenges, keep practicing, don't give up. And more importantly, don't give up on a lock that you can't pick. The best way to ensure you never pick a lock is never trying to pick the lock. But we also have to be humble enough to realize that sometimes there are just locks which will defeat our current skill level. And I don't mean that you will never pick it. I just mean you can't pick it right this second. But just to reiterate the point, don't put it in a cupboard, don't lock it away, don't give it to a friend keep it, practice one day, you'll pick it and you'll feel fantastic for having done so. It's because it's already picked. Now, this happens again, even to experienced pickers sometimes. You're picking a lock like this American Lock 1100 and you've set all the pins, you're going back through it, you just don't understand why it's not opening. I've got no feedback, everything feels picked, it is, hasn't opened yet, the shackle's still locked. Why, why, why can't I pick this lock? Um, and actually this happened to me the first time I ever picked one of these American Lock 1100s and it's because I didn't realize how strong the core spring was and if I'd only just turned it a little bit harder, I would have opened the lock. So sometimes the reason you can't pick the lock is because it's already picked open. Another Great example, and I've got one here ready set up, is that I've been picking this lock. I think that I'm in a, a really deep false set. I don't know how to get out of it. 
everything's dead. I don't get any feedback. Is it is it just my lack of skill? How can I even get into this? Well, what about if we just release it from the vice drawers and you realise that the tailpiece of the lock is pushing against the drawers of the vice, meaning that the lock was open. It wasn't in a false set. It's just that it was binding in the vice drawers and it wasn't allowing that tailpiece to come round and out like it is doing now. So if you really, really get stuck, check the lock actually isn't already picked because it's very hard to pick open a lock that is already open. Bonus reason, do you know what? You could just be tired. You just might have picking fatigue. You could have picked too long. You might be physically tired from a long day at work. It could be that you're upset about something. Your mindset isn't on the job. It could be that you're just frustrated with that lock that you just can't pick and it's really getting to you. Sometimes you just need to step away from the locks, go do something else, maybe just leave the locks for a few days and then come back to them. And it's amazing what a little bit of rest and a little bit of space can do for your lock picking, genuinely. You know, if you're not in the right mindset and you're getting tired and you're getting frustrated with the lock, it's very unlikely you're going to get a quick open. So there we are. That's my top 10 reasons why you might not be able to pick that lock. I'd be really interested to know what you think in the comments. Are there any other reasons that I've missed? Which ones have you fallen foul of? I can tell you I pretty much fell foul of all of those at some point in my uh, picking career. So yeah, do let me know what you think in the comments. Give me a like if you like this video, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and I'll see you all next time.